the okay. mogul, Mike Hornby. Good morning. And our newest guest on the program, Elias Coop Gonzalez from the 67th House of Delegates District. And my understanding is uh, you guys sat near each other on the floor. Is that correct? Wait, or no, Coop, Coop sends uh, a couple of rows back from me, but I, I can hear him when he's yelling at me. Uh, but during caucus, we, we did often uh, <laughs> sit together. Um, I, I was, you know, it's truly impressive what, what Coop does. He sticks to his guns. He's a good guy. So. All right. Coop, tell us about yourself a little bit. You're 20 years old? Yeah, well, first off, I just want to say thanks for having me. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm 20 years old. I uh, started my campaign when I was 19. I filed the paperwork. And it wasn't something that I, I really was gung-ho, like really wanted to do. But uh, the guy that was representing me, he was my neighbor from right across the street. And uh, I found out that he didn't have any primary opponent. No Republican was going to run against him in, in a district that I knew was, was winnable. Who was it? It was uh, Delegate Cody Thompson. Okay. And he's he's very radical all the way all the way to the left as far left as you can get. And uh, I just decided to file the paperwork and run since I, I saw no no one else was running. You know I was upset that uh, no one would would stand up uh, to take that position. But then I thought you know I'm kind of a hypocrite because I'm I'm expecting someone else to do it mm -hmm. right and asking someone else to do it when. I should be doing it. Same way I started hosting this show, Elias. Same thing <laughs> happened to me, man. <laughs> so I, I really feel like that's that's where uh, God led me, and uh, it wasn't easy going through ten months of uh, uh, being a candidate because I've I've volunteered in campaigns before. I'm I'm familiar with the process, but it's totally different being the candidate. But, Tell me your your superhero origin story here, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I'd go that far, but I'll. I'll uh, Dude, if you win an yeah. election at 19, you're, you know, that's superhero category. All right, all right. Well, I was, uh, I was born in, in Guatemala in uh, 2002 to an American dad and a Guatemalan mom, so I'm a natural-born citizen. And uh, I was there until I was 12. Now, my, my parents, they got separated, so I, I had a choice, you know, do I want to go uh, to the United States or do I want to stay in Guatemala? And, it was it was a tough decision, but it was very clear for me. It was I, I want to go back. I want to go to the United States, and uh, I moved to California for a year. Uh, really nice weather. Also, very conservative state. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I I, you know. I tell people, you know, I, I lived in California. I lived in Guatemala, so I've got a, a lot of experience with third world countries. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in Zimbabwe and California, so we, we have that in common. <laughs> he's just, he's, just, he's <laughs> following your path, baby. Come to America, go to That's California, right. go to West Virginia. Well, when you get that choice, like, and I want to go back to this because, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, Coop and I both had a choice to come to, to the United States. Mm -hmm. And everybody, I don't think they realize how much we have here now. Uh, that choice is so easy w when you compare com countries, right, Coop? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're 100 percent right, hmm. and uh, that that really influenced my perspective politically. Uh, I saw that there was a very stark contrast between the United States and Guatemala, and I've been to other countries, uh, primarily in Central America, but in Mexico, El Salvador, and I just I began to study civics in high school, uh, looking at the Constitution. You know, I wanted to see why is the United States different. You know, it's, it's not a coincidence, right? Uh, some countries didn't just uh, uh, out of luck. Uh, become a wealth wealthier, more prosperous, but uh, you know there's there's more in America than than prosperity. You know we've got rights that no other country affords to their citizens, and so I just went down went down that path and and looked at the Revolutionary War and just became uh, fascinated with American history, and so I, I went on to intern for Alex Mooney uh, right out of high school and interned his DC office for, for a while, so. Yeah, I did. My, my feet were. Is that unusual to get a, high, mm -hmm. a, a right out of high school internship at a congressional office? Uh, I, it's typically unusual. Um, I, I'd been volunteering for Alex for a few years, um, and I asked him, you know, hey, could I intern for you? And he said, well, you've, you've got to be 18, but once you turn 18, you know, you can you can come and and uh, intern. Now well, this. Well, was, how did you go from yeah. California to being drawn to the Mooney campaign in mm -hmm. West Virginia? Well, th that's a good question. Uh, my dad just has a in obsession with West Virginia for some reason. Uh, it's just intrinsic. I can't completely explain it. But uh, Is he from West Virginia? Not originally. Not originally. He was actually originally from California. You know, he went to Guatemala. That's where he met my mom. But uh, he just 
what it comes down to the most is West Virginia reflected our values the most, right? Patriotism, um, traditional, you know, your Judeo-Christian values. And it, it's just so much nicer being West Virginia where, you know, people are, are still uh, close knit mm -hmm. and they say hi to you even if they're strangers. That's not really something you see in California. Mm -hmm. So, in California, you just see them panhandling so, when they walk up to you. So talking about Alex, <laughs> you see that here too. Talking about Alex, mate. What's your uh, what's your thoughts on how Alex will do down in your area of the state? Because obviously, I mean, justice hasn't announced yet, but we all expect it, right? Mm -hmm. um, how do you see that race playing out? Um, you're close to obviously you're close to Alex Mooney. Mm -hmm. um, He's from up here, so a lot of us, especially in the panel, have endorsed him. Um, what are your thoughts on Alex's um, shot when mm -hmm. it go, when it comes to south of the Panhandle? Yeah, well, I actually have kind of a hot take when it comes to this, and I will disclose I have a little bit of bias, right, because I interned for him and mm -hmm. I know him personally, and uh, he's he's a good friend of mine. Uh, but that said, I think he stands a really good chance, even if Justice jumps in the race. Uh, you know, Justice is he's facing um, some scandals. Uh, you know, he has in, in the past, but obviously uh, a few more uh, recently. And Alex has really picked up a lot of momentum in the past couple of weeks. Um, a lot of a lot of really conservative groups coming out supporting him. I think uh, you know a really good example is Gun Owners of America. They're they're very influential. And this is going to be you know if Justice does decide to run, it's going to be a primary race. And I think that's a very different landscape than a general election. And we saw what happened to David McKinley, who's who's kind of in the same camp as, as Jim Justice, is more a little bit more of a moderate Republican. And people don't realize that Alex's uh, race with, with David McKinley, they only included about 20% of Alex's original district. It was about 80% of McKinley's district. So it was really, it was, it was completely a district for McKinley, and Alex crushed him by 20 points. Um, yeah, in his backyard, you know. too. Yeah, yeah, in his, yeah. In his backyard, yeah. which was incredible. So uh, Randolph County is where your legislative district is. Mm -hmm. Is it the entire county? Uh, it's half the county, and then I've got half of Pendleton County half as well. Half of Pendleton, too, yeah. which is kind of like the gateway to the panhandle, basically. Yep, yeah, it's the base of the panhandle. Right. All Sorry. right, so uh, let's talk about what legislation was important to you, uh, mm -hmm. Elias, while you were in Charleston this year. I know that you and Mike disagreed on Form Energy, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we disagreed on Form Energy, but, but at the end of the day, uh, I, I know that uh, Mike made his vote based on what he thought was best for West Virginia, and, and I respect that. Why did you think um, it wasn't best for West Virginia Form Energy? Well, I just don't think it was it was done uh, with enough thoroughness. Um, you know, we, we should. The thing is, uh, they're going to create 750 jobs allegedly, but a lot of those jobs could go to Ohio and Pennsylvania. And just generally speaking, yeah, you know, I'm I'm a uh, free market economist, you know, I study economics in college, I'm at Liberty University right now, and I just, I don't think it's the proper role of, of government to give money to businesses, you know, even if it wasn't a, a leftist uh, company like Form Energy, uh, it's just not something I think the government should be involved in. I, I would have rather seen that money just sent back to the people have, you know, a bigger tax increase. I think that would have created more jobs. Decrease, you meant. State. You said bigger tax increase. I, I oh, know I'm, you I'm didn't sorry. mean that. Yeah, <laughs> bigger tax cut, yes. bigger tax cut, that's right. what I meant to say. Uh, so bigger tax decrease, and so I, I think that's that's the route that we should have taken. Just me personally, Matt Miller. I, I want to go back to when you first jumped into. All right, hey, I'm feeling like a hypocrite. Somebody mm -hmm. needs to run, so it may as well be me. Did you go in with an expectation that you were going to win? I mean, or or as as your mindset. All right, I'm going to go do this. At what point did, did, did does it kind of become? I got to be in this to win this now, not just mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. Well, a lot of candidates they like to file for office and then they just kind of sit back mm -hmm. and hope that that they'll get it. Running running for office is really it's not like rolling dice. You know, anything mm -hmm. in politics, just to get anything done, it has to be pushed, right? Anything in politics, whether it be bills or, or campaigns, candidates, whatever. Uh, that said, I, I spent some time after I interned for Mooney at uh, an organization called Leadership Institute. And they're a nonprofit, they're activist oriented. Basically what they do is they, they teach conservative candidates and activists how to win in the public policy process. And I interned for them for about three or four months and uh, they liked me for whatever reason, so they, they kept me on for 
a little bit longer and, and I got to be the personal assistant to the president of Leadership Institute. And he's uh, very influential in the conservative movement in his own right, aside from being the president of Leadership Institute. Uh, his name is Morton Blackwell. He's the, the senior most member of the RNC, as well as the, I believe he's the, the chairman of the Rules Committee of the RNC. And he's just been involved in conservative politics forever. I mean, he worked for Reagan. Uh, he was uh, uh, involved with Barry Goldwater way back in the day in the 70s. And so I was able to to just have this hands-on experience with, with Morton Blackwell, a guy who pioneered a lot of the, the campaign tactics that we use today. So I felt that, like that, that really helped me in terms of uh, just uh, technical skill and then also just conservative philosophy. So to now be 20 years of age, you win the race, you are stepping into the West Virginia legislature at such a young age. What was that like? Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's definitely a steep learning curve, although I, I think that goes for anybody, whether you're, you're young mm -hmm. or old. But uh, really, it was, it was just a humbling experience, just coming in there. And uh, I didn't really feel like I was a, a legislator for the first couple of weeks. I felt like I was just But he sure, out. he sure did look like a legislator because he, he has got, he's got some suit game. Let me, let me, he's got the three piece down between, between Coop and I, we, we, we were dressed it to, to, to do business. So I appreciate it, Mike. <laughs> between Coop and I, we were dressed to do business. We were trying to glom onto his yeah, good looks. No, I, I, I will tell you, I, I want to, cause there, I, I do want to tell Coop, Coop kind of, um, he kind of made a friendship with Pat McGeehan uh, while you're down there. Pat's, yeah. Pat's the philosopher, so Pat sits right behind me. Pat's so. the only the only guy who quotes Plato on a regular oh, basis, and he's awesome. Let me tell you, I, I, <laughs> even I, Pliny the Elder. But I I would sit there and listen to the two of them talk, and I just, I was like, I'm not a philosopher, and I have no <laughs> idea what they were talking about half the time. But it was truly impressive the way Coop could go one on one with Pat McGeehan, um, who I truly respect and is very smart in that philosophy I mean, mm -hmm. he's going to be a professor so uh touch on how that friendship started Coop. yeah really uh, it started in december when we were choosing a uh a speaker we, we all had to congregate the entire republican caucus and and before we we went in there to to make that decision uh to choose our nominee for speaker roger hanshaw i got to sit down with a, a few of uh the delegates and, and I wanted to, to get to know them because they're going to be my colleagues in the upcoming session. And I sat down next to next to Pat and we just kind of clicked. And I told him I was studying uh, the history of Roman civilization in college, and uh, it w wasn't something that I, I had to, to to study to graduate. It was just an elective. And we just started talking about all kinds of uh, you know abstract uh, types of thinking and. And Platonic philosophy and, and Catonic philosophy, right? You know, uh, Cato the Elder, Cato the Younger, and just kind of just the way that American politics has been influenced by uh, Roman culture. I mean, you see it everywhere. Uh, really, if if you want to become an expert in really uh, any institution in the United States, you have to learn Roman history. I mean, our, our legal system is based in uh, Roman history. Right, the Latin language, I mean, very, very influential. Uh, our governmental structure, I mean, even the architecture uh, in, in our state houses is all Roman influence. And so we, we really bonded over just our, our uh, obsession for, for Roman history. And, and we just talk about philosophy quite a bit. Now he's, he's several levels above me. Uh, and you could you'd probably tell that from uh, listening to some of our conversations. But yeah, I, I like Pat a lot. Coop, let me ask you. What do you? What did not happen this year that you want to see happen in the legislature next year? What What are What are a couple things you think West Virginia needs that did not happen? Mm -hmm. I think in it's really in regards to education. I'd like to see the Hope Scholarship expanded. I think that's that's really it. It has been a game changer, and it's going to continue being a, a huge game changer uh, as as we move forward. Because you know. The education, not only in West Virginia, but but throughout the country, it's just it hasn't been working, and everyone everyone agrees, and, and the numbers don't lie. It just it it's not it's not working, but I think the Hope Scholarship is is just such a great opportunity. It's going to improve the quality of education and the opportunities for kids and their parents. It's going to be great. Yeah. Do you think there's anything that was passed this year that you personally did not think 
is going to be good for West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Besides the big one. Yeah, besides the big one. Right. Uh, form energy. Uh, I mean, th there's there's a lot of bills that uh, there's genuine disagreement over, and, and they're uh, smaller bills. Uh, I think there was one bill that talked about uh, life insurance um, and said that if if you filed for bankruptcy and, and you yeah. had funds in, in life insurance, um, you know, you, you didn't have to use that to, to pay off those debts. So, I mean, bills bills like that. Yeah, ba bankruptcy yeah. life insurance. That, that, yeah. was a, that was a crazy bill because it basically said that if you were smart enough, you could put your assets into a trust or something like that. And if you filed bankruptcy and you had $1.2 billion sitting in the trust, that wouldn't get access. It was, I agree with Coop, that was a, that was a tough bill to, to, to swallow um, and, and to go through. But in the end, it, 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 I think it did pass, right? But it didn't go yeah, through Yeah, it the did Senate. pass. It did pass. Yeah. Uh, but other than foreign energy, I mean, there's, there's nothing uh, big that stands out to me. I, I did vote no on, on quite a few things, but they were more relatively minor things, uh, things where there's, there's genuine nuance and, and disagreement. What Are was the, your thought on the, uh, the marriage bill that we passed out of the House and then came back from the Senate amended? Mm -hmm. uh, the way that it was amended, it was a good bill. Yeah. Uh, the fact that there's no limit on, on how young someone can be married in the state of West Virginia was actually kind of crazy to me. I thought, I mean, that's, that's pretty odd, right? Uh, now, originally it said that you have to be 18, and uh, that's, that's perfectly reasonable and, and logical and moral. But you have to wonder about the very narrow uh, situations where you know, maybe a 16 or 17-year-old girl got pregnant. You know, she should be able to because of the age of yeah, consent, right? Yeah, because of yeah. the age of consent, she should be able to get married. Right? The the state shouldn't force her to to have a baby and go unmarried. So they made those exceptions in in the Senate side. So I think they they brought it down uh, just to sixteen, right, with the exceptions. Yeah. And uh, I, I I supported that bill. Yeah. Is there any bill you'd want to propose for next year that you think would uh, would really be beneficial to the people of West Virginia? Mm-hmm. Well, I I only spon or was the lead sponsor on a, a couple of bills this time around. Uh, I I had a TikTok ban. <laughs> that got uh, that got got some yeah. traction and, and got you know it, it got through one committee I believe or it went yeah to, it was it was uh, discussed a lot right. I hope that's not for state workers because that would that would really increase the the <laughs> amount of work they get yeah. done if they can't <laughs> watch the productivity. TikTok. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they ended up adopting the governor's bill, yeah. which is uh, it, it was just on government. It encompasses, right? yeah, it encompasses yeah. TikTok, but I, I think it should be a little bit more uh, specific to that. Uh, and then my other bill was uh, a pro-life related bill. It's it's more, I guess you could say it's kind of a criminal justice bill, uh, and and I'm working on that one as well. But uh, to be honest, there's there's other guys out there that are proposing pieces of legislation who, who know a little bit more about what they're doing, like uh, Chris Pritt, uh, very good conservative constitutionalist guy. Uh, he's he's uh, proposed a lot of legislation to strengthen our constitutional rights, things like that. Um, and I'll I'll begin behind him. And, and I think that's uh, what people don't realize is we we've all got great ideas, but when you're down there, it it's. It's okay to write your own bills. It's okay to put things forward, but it's also really cool to get on other people's mm -hmm. bills and co-sponsor them or, or try and get them through committee and, and work together. Um, th those are the things, especially for for the new guys. By the time we kind of got our feet wet, we're two weeks in, and now you're writing a bill. It, <laughs> it you're, you're behind the eight ball. There's a thousand bills already submitted, so. Mm -hmm. How much of that is someone who's leading a bill coming to you and saying, hey, I believe you and I share some of the same thoughts. Let's talk about co-sponsoring, or how much of it is you so, maybe approaching that? Give, so give I, me the quickest answer you can have because I have a surprise phone call. I here. think uh, initially it, it's it's very much like that, but once you get into it, you really start working with people. You, mm -hmm. you build relationships. You hear about bills. You read bills, and you're like, I want to be on this okay. bill. Yeah. And so you approach them. Yeah. All right. All right. To the phone, I've got a surprise delegate guest here in the final minute or two that we have delegate pat mcgeehan is hanging on pat i got coop and hornby in the house oh my goodness the dynamic duo couldn't be two more extremes Jeez. Got mr mr hornby who 
once told me he had a thought about hitting me while I was jogging on the boulevard. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, true. It, it was, I told you, it was just a small thought. It, it was oh, I didn't move my hand. You were only slightly tempted to hit and run. Okay, I got you. I got you. And, so you uh, have the nihilist cool. on the one hand, and then you have the, the idealist. Uh, on the other, Mr. Coop, who I, uh, I adore too. So both of you guys are great. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's a comeback right there. The economy of work. So we were, we we're being introduced to your conversations with Coop about Cato the Younger and Cato the Elder here, Pat. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was a good conversation. Uh, I was really impressed. Um, he's very well read, especially for his age. Coop. So, uh, Coop, what did you get from this guy during your, during the legislative session? What did he mean to you? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I appreciated from Pat is uh, obviously I I have uh, very strong opinions and I made them very well known as Mike knows. But one of the things that Pat really did is he challenged a lot of those beliefs, and uh, Pat really made me you know uh, stand more firm in in the things that I originally believed in in some ways, and then ch in other ways really challenged me to maybe rethink. Uh, you know where I'm, I'm coming from and uh, I, I really really do appreciate that Pat I appreciate you calling in real quick man I, I just want to make oh, sure no, we got a chance to no talk no to you and we're gonna get well, Pat, we're gonna get Pat's bills through next year next year uh, right oh, Pat I appreciate, I appreciate that well, yeah we I'm got sure we got post-it notes on the whole left left hand side of the house with, with, with the, the mantra <laughs> for Pat's bill Pat thanks for calling man oh thank you see you guys yep, see you Pat appreciate it